بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما and now the next thing we'll try to understand we have already seen like the switches the single vlan can span over multiple switches and if you want the vlan users of the same vlan to talk to each other we need to connect a trunk link and we'll be allow using the same trunk link to carry the vlan 10 traffic vlan 20 or vlan 30 traffic right but now the question is the same one single link is carrying the vlan 10 traffic vlan 20 vlan 30 and when the switch one is sending it knows that this belongs to 10 this belongs to 20 or this belongs to 30 or for easy easy understanding you can i can use the names as colors red green blue so when it is received on the switch 2 it is received on the same link but now how the switch 2 will identify this belongs to 10 the second one belongs to 20 and the third one belongs to 30 because the format of the frame remains the same for all right so if you remember we have seen the format ethernet frame formats in the basics so basically this contains the source and destination mac addresses apart from your actual payload information so basically the, here there is no information about which vlan it actually belongs so how the switch to will come to know or how the switch to is going to differentiate the traffic of every vlan when they go on the same link now that is a question arises here and for overcoming this issues now we have something called tagging process so on the trunk links we have a tagging process it means that whenever your ethernet frame is uh, moving over the trunk link because this is your trunk link and this trunk link is actually carrying your vlan 10 vlan 20 and vlan 30 traffics so when it is carrying your actual frame it is going to carry some additional tag so basically it is going to add a tag information and that tag is going to indicate that which vlan it belongs okay so the tag is added when the information is sent over the trunk link and why this tag is required because it is used for identifying the packets when it is traveling over the trunk links because if i just send as a frame if all are frames this is from vlan 10 this is from vlan 20 this is from vlan 30 so basically they all have you know the same same format there is no difference in this so we need to add something like 10 20 30s saying that okay this tag is going to indicate that this frame belongs to vlan 10 this frame belongs to vlan 20 and this frame belongs to vlan 30 so that the opposite switch can identify that particular frame or the packet belongs to which vlan so this tagging is required to identify the packets over the trunk links and we call this process as a vlan tagging process or in simple you will see different names frame tagging process basically uh, there are different names generally we use for identification now let's see how it works okay now we have seen the tagging process is actually required on the trunk link for identification but now the question is how the tagging happens where it exactly happens now as we discussed already that in order to make sure that the same vlan users when they are span over multiple switches uh, they they use a method of tagging and this tagging is done on the trunk links so which means when the switch is sending when the switch receives or forwards or identifies it will be a normal frame so when i'm saying normal frame means again you need to understand that it contains the source and destination mac addresses apart from your actual payload or your data with some frame check sequence Uh, information and some other informations basically like type field you know there are different fields we discussed already so this is your normal frame so normal frame contains the source and destination mac which is used for identifying the specific device but there is no information about to which vlan it belongs because normally when the switch receives it will be like a normal frame and now the switch will see the destination mac address and it will do two things so either it will do unicast if it knows exactly on which port that particular device is connected or it will do flooding or broadcast within the vlan right we we know these concepts so let's assume that it is going to do broadcast so it is going to broadcast out of all the links within the same vlan so let's assume green vlan let's say all the ports in that vlan 
And also this broadcast will go on the trunk link because the trunk link is going to receive the traffic for all the VLANs by default. By default, it will receive the traffic for all the VLANs. And now what the trunk link is going to do, the trunk link is supposed to forward this link out, of, out to the next switch or the next device. But before it actually forwards, it is going to do something called tagging. So it is going to add that particular frame with a tag. And in that tag, let's say this is on the trunk link. So once it receives on the trunk link, it is going to add the tag. And that tag includes the VLAN ID. So it's going to write down that this frame belongs to VLAN 10. So this additional tag is added and it is sent over the trunk link. Why? Because if there is no tag, then how the switch two will recognize or identify this frame belongs to which VLAN? Because the trunk link is carrying multiple VLAN traffic here. So now when the switch two receives, it is going to receive in the form of frame with a tag and it will recognize that Okay, uh, by, by seeing this tag, it is going to say that this frame belongs to VLAN 10, which means I need to ensure that I'm sending only out of the ports or send this packet only within the VLAN 10 only, not to everyone. And once it will identify, now it is going to send this packet out of the VLAN, uh, out to all the ports in the VLAN 10 if it is unknown. Again, if it is unknown, it will go to all the ports within the VLAN 10. If it is known, it will go to a specific port based on the MAC table. But when it is sending, it is going to remove this tag. Now you can see the tag is added when it is sending the frame on the trunk link. And once it is received, it will see the tag and it recognizes the VLAN and it will remove the tag now. And when it is sending to the end device or when the packet is leaving this port, the access port, it is like a normal frame. The same frame format is same here. So the tag is added, added when it is sending and once it receives, it will be removed. So the tagging happens only on the trunk link. Remember that. Whereas the access links, they are not aware of the tagging process. They don't even know that there are multiple VLANs running in your network because they just identify based on the source and destination MAC addresses. That's it. So the tag is added before the frame is sent on the trunk link and once it is received it will remove the tag by identifying that particular VLAN and if you try to see the Ethernet frame so we already discussed this Ethernet frame this is your not this one this is your actual your Ethernet frame this is your actual Ethernet frame which contains the fields what I discussed like the source and destination MAC addresses including the type or the length along with your actual data and the frame check sequence for kind of error correction mechanism. Now this is your actual Ethernet frame and it is added with additionally with a tag. So if you see all the fields are same, basically it will add one additional information called tag. And this tag will be, again, it depends how many bytes it will be. So depending upon which protocol we use, generally if you're using dot one cube protocol, it will be four bytes of additional tag will be added. And that tag includes multiple informations. So the main information is VLAN ID. Now this VLAN ID is going to be indicate, let's say it is a 12 bit in case of I, in case of dot one Q encapsulation. We'll talk about encapsulation methods or the protocols used for tagging process. Now, which means uh, this 12 bit specific frame belongs to, is going to tell which VLAN it actually belongs. And generally it supports up to 12 bit, which means up to 4000 to, to the power of 14, it supports up to 4096 VLANs or 0 to 4095 VLANs. So this is your actual VLAN ID. Apart from that, you also see some other information here like Ethernet type. Now this indicates it's actually a two octet bit, two octet means, two octet means, you know, 16 bit field. Uh, this is field is going to determine uh, which protocol is used here or which po protocol, in which protocol you have to hand over the payload on the other side of the switch. Because when you're sending the frame to the other side, what is the protocol? Generally, it will be Ethernet. Uh, Ethernet, generally the default number will be 0x8100. That is a default Ethernet type for all your dot one q or trunking protocols. 
So it tells the actual payload in which format, Ethernet format, Ether type, that's what we call it as. Uh, it's a kind of 802.1 Q tagging. Generally, we call it as 802.1. This is like 802.1 Q tagging, sorry. Uh, inside this, it indicates it's an 802.1 Q tagging method used here. So there are other tagging methods also. So this represents, we are using uh, trunking uh, tagging. And there is something called priority bit. Priority bit is used in quality of service. Uh, in other words, we call it as a class of service. So this defines the priority of your priority for your traffic. Like in the quality of service concepts, probably we'll, we'll talk about quality of service later on in um, CCNA sections, probably uh, overview. We can give some priority for specific traffic and that priority can be given based on these bits. So there is a value from zero to seven, where seven is considered as high priority traffic, where zero is considered as the normal priority traffic or the least priority traffic. So, but the main part here, it is going to be VLAN ID, it is going to carry. And of course, there is something, one more field called CFI, uh, canonical format identifier, we call it as. It will be always zero for all your ethernet switches. One will be for token ring networks, but it will be always zero. So basically that field doesn't make any difference here. But mainly this, this field, the VLAN ID, the VLAN ID is going to indicate which VLAN it actually belongs. So the main thing we need to understand here is the format. The same thing here, when the switch when, when the switch receives, it will be a normal frame which contains the source and destination MAC addresses. But when it is sent over the trunk link, it will be added with a tag. And this tag is used for identifying this particular frame belongs to which VLAN. And when the switch to receives, it is going to identify that particular frame belongs to which VLAN and then forward only to that particular devices within that VLAN either as a unicast or broadcast. So tagging is used for identifying the devices, identify the VLANs between the switches, and it is added on one side and removed on the other side. 